Hey, what is going on, guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here uh, to break down the two game, the uh, two two game early slates as well as the four game main slate for uh, CS:GO on Thursday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is DK. I make daily videos breaking out NBA, NFL, and esports daily fantasy sports slates. Esports including Call of Duty, League of Legends, and this one Counter Strike CS:GO. Um, also, I just want to say thank you guys for all the support. Um, we are closing in on 3.3 thousand subscribers. So if you guys enjoy the content, um, you know, take a couple seconds every day, hit the like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, that does really, really help me out to continue to grow this channel. Also, we got good news. NBA is coming back the end of July. Yeah, I am so, so excited. i um, going to be making videos, obviously, and live streaming once again. I really miss live streaming, talk to you guys, talking to you guys every single day. So super excited about that, under two months uh, away. But again, and, until then, let's continue to grind out eSports and continue to put out these videos. Also, one more thing. Uh, we did get news Call of Duty will be postponing their event till next weekend. So unfortunately, no Call of Duty this weekend. But there is still some CSGO. Um, and we have really good, a um, lot of slates here to talk about on Thursday. So let's jump into it. Um, I guess before we get into players and their prices for these slates, let's look back on lineup here from Wednesday. So first we'll go over my late slate lineup. So my late slate lineup, I wanted to differentiate a little bit from my main. Um, I, I played a lot of chalk here. Um, I put Jakeem in the captain spot. So... We saw that my slight issue with those 100 these guys, they were the biggest favorites, but they're they're just more of a balanced team. And we saw that, uh, you know, again, the, the bottom two guys in the roster for like the second time in two or three games, AZR and Lias, were the top two performers. So that was the issue there. Um, you know, 100 Thieves still won, but, um, you know, the guys that you expect to do really good, right, Jakeem, JKS, kind of had off games. And they were super popular. Um you know, JKS was like 60, 70% owned in a lot of the, the tournaments I was in. Um, but let's talk about the other pieces here. So, right, Fallen and KNGV. Um, KNGV, I was actually pretty surprised how low owned he was. I really thought, you know, I mentioned again, Zaiwu, the 100 Thieves guys, and KNGV were the guys I really thought were going to be uh, the chalk tomorrow. KNGV, you know, this one was 29% owned, and in, in the main slate, he's only 20% owned. I know, again, um, he, he had an amazing day, but I just thought he was, he looked really good at that price for, for a cash game play. Um, so I expect him to be higher owned. Fallen wasn't bad. I went 22 and 18. Um, again, I was fine going back the well there. Again, he wasn't terrible. I knew he was going to be super low owned. Um, and this one, again, he was a little bit higher owned because there's not as many games. Um, and then OC and Cirque. Cirque had a really good day. Um, uh, EG, I'll talk about it. My, I'll, well, let's just now go to my main slate lineup. So this was my main lineup. Um, I wanted to get a little bit different, and I was messing around with roster construction so much last night, and I just I was always like a hundred dollars short of something confident in. Like the guys I wanted to get in were, um, you know, a couple of those hundred thieves guys. I wanted Floppy, Zaiwu, um, and either like KNGV or Fallen, um, and then like like Cirque in there too. But I was always like. $100 off. So I just said, screw it. I'm going to go super risky here. Throw someone, throw one of the cheapest guy in the slate in the captain spot. Didn't really work out for me. Um, I know TRK ha hasn't been um, good really with, with MIBR, but um, yeah, it was a shot I, I was okay taking. Uh, again, I wasn't playing huge money. If I was in like the $222 tournament, um, then I wouldn't take that shot. But in like a $33 tournament like this one, I was okay. Uh, to just to again differentiate myself and get a lot of again I plugged him in and basically plugged in whoever else I wanted so Zaiwu I knew he was gonna be really chalky seventy five percent owned um, JKS was was really chalky as well sixty three percent in this thirty three dollar tournament again he was a letdown um, the way I differentiated myself a little bit again was gratisfaction I paid a little bit more for him over Jakeem um, and then again paying up for Fallen too I knew that was gonna be um, contrarian and then floppy. So that, this was the, the tilting part of the day was um, I was watching that game. C9 was up 12 to 2 uh, in in the first 10 rounds. Before he was in 12 to 2, Floppy had 30 fancy points in 10 rounds. Oh, yeah, it was 12 to 2, and um, the EG guys were pretty chalky in the 33 dollars tournament. You had Breeze at almost 50% owned. You had Cirque at about 35 to 40%. So if C9 just closes that game out, um, all those lineups of those EG guys are dead. 
But sure enough, uh, C9 actually chokes. EG brings it all the way back, and they win. And you have, you know, the chalky guys like Cirque and Breeze. Cirque outperformed Flo Floppy. Floppy still outperformed Breeze. But either way, again, it was just... That really took it. That that was uh, super, super tilting for me watching that. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, but you saw a lot of that today. A lot of big comebacks. Um, MIBR was also up big. They choked. 100 Thieves were up big, right? It's just... Uh, it seems like a, a lot of teams cannot close these games. Um, all right, enough of that, though. That, that basically wraps it up. So, yeah, cash, cash in the late slate, miss in the main slate. Um, all right, let's do it. Um, first, we'll talk about the two-game DreamHack tournament uh, slate. So, um, in this one, the, there's only one right now in Bavada. It's Tyloo versus Beachy. This is a later game. Almost a pick em. You do have Avicii Gaming at slight favorites at minus 140. Now, I did find the Renegades Avant game elsewhere on esportsbets.com. Um, you have the Renegades are huge, huge favorites. Uh, almost minus 700. They're minus 660 right now. So, um, you know, those the Renegades guys look really good today. Again, they're going to be really, really popular like they were today. Um, so, my, my plan for this slate is... Again, probably just go with three-man uh, Renegade stack. And then that last game, I think it could go either way. So you can you know get a little bit different there. If you want a one-off here for Avant, again, it would be Sterling. He has amazing numbers. Again, if you just look at it really quick compared to everyone else in his team, he has 0.82 kills round, 0.55 deaths round. Everyone else, you know, not, it's still positive. But again, they're playing against worse competition. The Sterling's numbers compared to everyone on his team really, really stand out. So if you wanted to run a one-off to be a little bit contrarian against Sterling would be the guy. But other than that, I'm, I'm kind of fading about on the running aid side. Again, I'm pretty happy on them for the, this two-game slate. They're going to be super, super popular, but uh, I'll probably try to get different in this last game. Um, so yeah, on the running aid side, uh, you had Dexter had the best game today. Um, he has really good numbers. INS was... A little bit disappointing. Uh, again, Dexter, I think he had like 70-something, 70 75. I think Sicko had a pretty good game, too. He had 76, whereas INS um, had 56. So he's a little bit of a letdown uh, for his price. So, you know, I think that, that kind of lowers his ownership a little bit. Um, so that makes me like INS more, just because I think he'll be the lowest owner of those top three guys. So he's probably my favorite. Um, also, you know, he is the cheapest of the three of those top three guys with INS, Dexter, and Sicko. All three, though, I like a lot. It's really hard to ignore these guys. Um, again, they have very, very good uh, good stats overall. And Renegades have been on fire recently. Um, and then, you know, if you look at their head-to-heads, right, Renegades have dominated 12-3. to So, uh, again, the, oh, also this, this first slate is a best of three. Everything else is best of one. So just thought I would bring that up. Um, and then, you know, the other two guys in the roster, Hats is, I still think, in play because he's super cheap at 5.2K. And if that's how you want to get different on the slate, you want to leave some money on the table and play hats instead of those top three guys, I'm okay with it. Uh, Malta at 7K, again, that's you're going to be a little bit different um, going with him compared to everyone else on uh, you know, the top three guys. He has not as good numbers, but still okay, right? 0.66 and 0.61. Um, so yeah, all in all, uh, the Renegades is a, is a team I'll probably be three stacking in this two-game slate. Uh, the top three guys look really good. Again, if you want to get a little bit different, uh, Malta is in play. Same with hats, right? 5.2K. That could be the way you differentiate yourself uh, on this slate. Um, and then the last game here, again, we have Vici versus Tyloo. And this one is projected to say close. Uh, Vici are slight favorites at minus 140. Um, let's go over the price tags first for uh, the Vici side. So you have Allman at the top at 8K. Um, you have uh, I Am Young at 7.8. K's, Zoinking, and Advent. Uh, rounded out. K's at 7.2, Zoinking uh, at 5.8, and Advent at 4.6K. So, um, Advent's a guy I'd probably just cross off. Uh, he's not good numbers at all, right? 0.5 and 0.63. So, even at, at 4.6, it's probably a stay away from me. Um, Zoinking, I think, is viable. Again, he's slightly negative. I'm not super excited about that. So, honestly, for me personally, I'd probably just cross off the, those bottom two guys. Uh, Almond, I am going in K's. Um, if we talk about their prices, right, you have Almond at the top. Of, he's uh, numbers of the last three months, 0.74 kills round, 0.63 deaths round. Compared to I am young, or Jam Young, I should say. Um, so I thought it was I. Been staring at screen all day. So uh, Jam Young, 
uh, with uh, 0.81 and 0.63. So he has the best numbers the last three months. I think he's probably the top play on the Vici side, in my opinion. Um, and then if you look at Kays, he has good numbers as well, 0.73 and 0.59. So those top three guys do kind of carry the roster. I would probably rank them for their prices. Jam Young 1, Kays 2, Almond 3. Um, and then on the other side, uh, you have Ty Lu. So again, they are uh, slight dogs here, but I, th I still think there's some interesting plays. Um, Danking is the guy that has the best numbers overall, 0.81 and 0.65. Uh, he is the highest price guy at 9K. Maybe that makes them a little bit more contrarian, and they are, again, underdogs. You just always see the favorites are more popular, even if they're slight favorites. So Danking might be a little bit lower owned, but I still like him a good amount here. Again, those numbers are really, really solid. Um, everyone else in the team, um, you can scroll through and, and kind of see. I think a guy like somebody uh, at almost even KD for you know 4.8K does intrigue me a little bit. Right? He had a good game the last game, but I think that's a potential value play you could look to. Again, you have somewhere in slowly similar numbers, uh, about a couple thousand dollars more. So that's why somebody kind of does intrigue me there at that price. Um, and then uh, you have uh, Attacker. Um, he is 6.8. Again, not super excited about that either. So, uh, you know, I think, some, or again, somebody looks looks good. This is my second favorite player on the side because of that price tag um, being so cheap. So again, uh, my strategy for this two game slate will probably be a three man renegade stack. If you want a one off for for Avant, it would be Sterling for me. That but that's about it. In this game, I'm kind of undecided. You know, I think you could go three man stack of either side, or um, you could go like a two one, right? So uh, that's gonna be my approach for this slate. Uh, but enough of talking about that. Let's now move on to uh, the second uh, two game early slate. Um, so let me get to that really quick. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at these odds for these uh, the two early games here. We have Mouse Esports and Mad Lions. That one's a pick them right now. Uh, and then you have Team Vitality and Saw. Team Vitality are enormous saves here, minus 475. So once again, like the, the, the slate I just talked about, my strategy for this game is probably just going to be a three-man Vitality stack. And then the Mouse Esports Mad Lions game, I think you could go three man stack either way or go or go like two one right. So uh, that's gonna be my approach for this slate as well. Let's first talk about Mad Lions versus Mouse Esports. So um, if we look at recent games, right, Mad Lions have been they've been playing really well. They two zero Mouse Esports um, a few games ago. They beat Fnatic. They beat VP. They beat Dignitas all pretty easily. Um, now you do, I believe, Mouse Esports. Or again, yeah, it's a, it's a pick em. Um I think, I don't know, because, you know, Mouse Esports do have the, the better overall ranking, but really, again, if you watch a lot of them recently, they have not looked good. Mad Lions have looked like a, the much better team. I would say Mad Lions are probably going to be more popular, if I had to guess. Um, but let's go over, yeah, let's go over the Mad Lions side first. So you have Bubshki, 7.8K, just 7K, and a course, 5. I don't know why they keep making a core the, the cheapest play at Mad Lions. It doesn't make any sense to me. He uses the op, and he's been playing really well. Um, he has good overall numbers, too. If you look at his numbers, again, that's why I, I don't know what DraftKings is thinking with his price. 0. 0.68 kills per round, 0. 0.59 deaths per round. And you have Roge and Asilion, who are both even, right? They're not terrible, but both even KD uh, and less, you know, kills per round. And they're both uh, more expensive than a core. So, that doesn't really make sense to me. I much prefer a core over those two guys. Now, I'm not saying Roach and Asilion are out of play. Those guys would be a lot lower owned. So if you want to, again, the three highest owned guys in this team are for sure going to be above Shisha Just and a core. If you want to differentiate yourself and take a shot in Roach or Asilion, I'm fine with it, right? It's a two-game slate. you got to get different somehow. And we've seen, right? It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, the, the top three guys in the team are not always going to be the top three in the leaderboard every single time. We saw with 100 Thieves, right? Again, they're a little bit more balanced, but the last few games, at least, the bottom two guys in their roster have been, you know, leading the way. So, um, you know, my favorite play for for the price is probably core on this team of 5.6K. That seems way, way too cheap. Uh, Bubshi should Josh. They're pretty similar plays to me. Uh, I think Bubshi is going to be a lot higher owned just because he had that one big game recently, right? He had like 40... 48 fancy points in a best of one, uh, which is just insane. Uh, where are we at? Um, 
But yeah, Bubshi, again, he's a very, very aggressive player. I've talked about that a lot. 0.76 kills round, 0.64 deaths round, and a 1.21 rating 2.0. So Josh is close to him, right? 0.73 and 0.63, a slightly lower rating 2.0, 1.16. So um, I think both, again, both are pretty similar. Bubshi should be a little bit um, higher owned, and again, he should be should be more expensive. So DraftKings got that right with, you know, having Bubshi over should Josh. Um, yeah, I think, again, those those are the top three plays for me. Bubshi should Josh core if you want to get different. You can still target Roj and Asilian, who have had big games. But my favorite play first price is a core of 5.6K. Uh, and then Bubshi should Josh is almost a toss-up. Bubshi is going to be more popular, in my opinion. He's the more aggressive player. But that doesn't mean should Josh can't outscore him. He's had much better games than Bubshi um, in, you know, if you're just looking at game logs there. So, now let's move on to Mad, or Mad Lions, Mousy Sports. This is a team that's just been, ugh, they're a frustrating team to watch. They're up and down. They really have just not looked good recently, to be honest. So the good thing about this team is it, it's pretty simple. Chris Jay and Kerrigan are always cross-offs for me. Unless they're unless Mousy Sports are playing like a really, really bad team and they're enormous favorites, then I consider those really cheap guys for, like, again, that's more of, like, a best-of-three strategy, though. You're hoping for the 2-0. This is a best-of-one. So, Chris J. Kerrigan, just cross off. Um, no interest in there for me. Uh, again, their, their numbers, they're just OBJ players, 0.56 and 0.69, 0.57 and 0.75. Stay away. They, they don't really do a whole lot killing. Uh, but the other three guys they do have interest in with Rops, Frozen, and Waxic. Um, Rops is the best overall numbers. He's the highest-priced guy. But he's looked the best recently here. Um, again, he's at a 0.74 kills from 0.62 deaths round. You have Frozen at 0.69 to 0.66, and Woxing at 0.67 to 0.64. So Woxing and Frozen have been very similar recently numbers, whereas Rops, again, he has looked the best um, of the bunch. So um, I would probably rank it Rops 1, and then for the price, I would probably prefer now Woxing over Frozen. He's about $1,000 cheaper, and he uses the op too. Just thought I'd bring that up. Um, but they've... They have pretty similar numbers uh, overall last three months, so I'd prefer Woxic to Frozen. So I'll probably rank them Rops 1, Woxic 2, Frozen 3. Um, and then Saw versus Vitality real quick here. On the Saw side, um, I have very uh, little interest in this team. You did have uh, Stadato uh, have a pretty good game today. Um, he was using the op. He looked pretty good, but I'm not going to go there. I'll let others chase. The one guy I would have some interest in would be Muterus at... Um, What's his price point at? He's at 8K. Just a one-off, but again, I'm not going to be going that way. Uh, I'll, I'll be going with a three-man vitality stack. So will Zywu be 100% owned on this slate? That's a question. I think he'll be close. I think he'll be, in this tournament, probably 90% owned. Um, yeah, love him at 9.4K. He's still a little bit too cheap. Um, he's the safest play on this slate, at least. Um, he has an amazing number. He's been playing unreal. He really has been playing really, really good, so... Gotta love Zaiwu. He's gonna be the ultimate chalk. Um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get cute and fade him. I'll, I'll be playing him and probably be playing him in the captain spot too. Um, the other guys on the Vitality roster are so hard for me to figure out. I've watched a lot of Vitality, but it's just they take turns um, having good games, and it's like you feel like oh, Shocks and Apex. These are the two guys that I think are the next best players. And then you see Miss do an RPK go off. Like, to, like RPK had a really good game today. It's just, it's almost like I put my hands in the air because I wish I had better analysis for you guys. But if you, again, looking at their numbers too, they're very similar. They're all hovering around one, a KD, maybe slightly below. They have all have flash upside, but really trying to differentiate the guy, these guys is tough. So I think you kind of just go with your gut there and go with, uh, what you feel is right. Again, I really don't have a strong lean. I think I'll be running a three-man vitality stack. Who else am I going to play besides Zaiwu? I haven't really decided that. I guess it kind of depends on who I get in that first game, right, and who kind of fits with roster construction. But, um, yeah, that's basically it for, for this slate. So now let's move on to the main slate. Again, I'll try to go a little bit quicker. I know uh, my last video was like 40 minutes. Um, so I'll try to get this or try to go through this a little bit faster. We have a big tournament today. Or, or tomorrow, I should say. $15 entry, 25 k to first. Make sure you guys get into this tournament. Um, normally, we see like 10 or 15 k to first. This one's pretty big. 25 k to first. So, excited to break this one down. Uh, let's do it. Uh, let me exit out of those. All right. So, we have four games. Uh, first game is Dignitas versus Fanatics. Let's scroll down there. 
Um, we have uh, Fnatic uh, minus 190 favorites. Then we have Fury versus Chaos. Fury at minus 265 favorites. 100 Thieves in Cloud9. This one's uh, projected to stay close. 100 Thieves are slight favorites here at minus 140. And then EG and Triumph. EG the biggest favorites of the day at minus 325. Um, if we're just looking at these odds, right, I think it's, you know, if we're, if we're targeting cash games, it's going to be a lot of Furia and a lot of EG for me. Um, let's first talk about uh, the first game here. Dignitas versus Fnatic. So this one, you know, Fnatic, again, they've been a really up and down uh, team recently, but I think they are the better team here. They have won the last two games, too, against Virtus Pro and Mouse Esports, whereas Dignitas has really struggled. They did pick up a win against VP, but VP has really been struggling themselves. Um, I'm going to lean towards uh, Fnatic here. They're going to be a lot more popular, but I just feel more more comfortable. I think they're the better team. Um, so this Dignitas team, if you want to get contrarian, again, it's it's Forrest and Halzerk for me. Everyone else is kind of a stay away. Um, I think Freiburg actually had a pretty good game today, or was it Zist? One of those cheap guys. Maybe they don't have it on here yet. But, uh, 6-2. Yeah, they don't have a reset. I think it was Freiburg had a good game, but... Get right can have good games too, but I don't even want to consider on this slate. I don't want to get cute. Again, Forrest Halzerk uh, as one-offs, but that's really it for me. Um, I feel I feel pretty good Fnatic can take this one. I know they're going to be a lot more popular, but I just feel more comfortable with them. I think they are the better team, even though they've been a little inconsistent up and down recently. Um, on the Fnatic side, so looking at their price points, I think my favorite play for his price is Krim, 7.8K. Um... Again, if you're looking at their numbers, they, they're they a little bit up and down. But um, at, at that price point, normally him, Brolin, and Flusha are, are priced about the same. Now you're getting you know a $1,200 discount with Crims and Brolin. And if you look at their numbers the last three months, not super far off. Crims at 0.69 and 0.65. Brolin, 0.74 and 0.67. Right, so Brolin has, has better numbers. But you're also going to have to pay $1,200 more. So I'd probably prefer... I would say Krim's probably my favorite play on the Fnatic side. And then Brolon, uh, 9K. Um, he's just a very, very aggressive player. I love playing players like this. He's always he's going to push. He's going to initiate a lot of gunfights. Um, he's going to be like, you know the first guy in those gunfights a lot of the time. And if he's winning those first gunfights, he has potential to put up a really big score in, in one map. And these are best of ones. right? He did it against VP. It's 26 and 11. So he for sure is the most upside in this team. Um, I really like him. So I'd probably rank at Krim's, Brolon. A one and two for me. Flush at 8.2 is viable too, but I think, I don't know, it's close with him and JW for my third favorite play on this team. JW's price is slowly creeping up, but he's also been playing pretty well. And he uses the op. Um, his numbers overall are about even, I believe. Um, where are we at? JW. Yeah, 0. 0.67 and 0. 0.67. Flush has a 0. 0.7 and 0. 0.66. So he's, you know, again, pretty similar to, to Crims, but yeah, I think I'd rank him. Uh, Crims 1, Brolon 2, and then JW Flush are about tied. Now, Golden actually has looked decent, surprisingly, the last couple of games. Um, you know, he put up 19 and 12 against VP, but normally he's just, I'm not going to chase it. I know it is a pretty cheap price point, but I just don't feel good about it. Um, he's His numbers overall are not really great, right? 0.57 and 0.68, so that's probably a pass for me. Um, all right, let's now move on to the next game here. So we have... Fira versus Chaos. Fira are minus 265 favorites. They're going to be pretty popular, but I love the Fira side here, the prices. First, I guess we can talk about the Chaos side. So this is kind of like the Dignitas side. I, I feel pretty good about Fira here like I, I did against Fnatic. Now, I feel more confident with Fira. Um, I think they are the much better team here. So on the Chaos side, it's Zeppa as a one-off for me just because, again, he is, he is a guy that really can put up a big game in, in one map. Looking at his numbers, 0.81 kills per round. Really, really good, 0.65 deaths per round. Um, but th that's really it. I think it's only one off for me. I don't think I really consider anyone else in this team because I just really, really like this Furia side here. Um, Caserato, Henny, and Yuri are, you know, these these top three guys have really, really good numbers and really do carry this roster. Now, Art and Vinny, for value, if you want to get contrarian, I think you can consider at least but normally these top three guys are, are really the ones that, that do all the work here. Looking at their numbers, and we can go over them briefly, right? Yuri, 0. 0.76 and 0.61. Caserato, 0. 0.74 and 0.56. And Henny, 0. 0.69 and 0.55. Compared to Vinny, who's got a negative KD, Art negative as well. So that's kind of the good thing about this roster, was we know where the production is coming from most of the time. 
Um, so Art Vinny, again, kind of cross-offs unless you want to get super contrarian for a low-owned option, but I'll probably stay away. With Caserato, Henny, and Yuri, it's, it's a close one for me. I think even though Caserato is the most expensive player, I still think I like him the most. So I would probably go Caserato 1, Yuri 2, Henny 3. But they're all pretty similar, pretty similar plays, right? Pretty similar prices. I, I'm pretty pretty high in this fear in this fear side. I like him a lot. Um, I think they should be able to win this one. So yeah, I really like those top three guys in Furia. Furia. Uh, now let's move on to C9 versus 100 Thieves. So um, first we're going to talk about the Cloud9 guys. Uh, Floppy still had a good game for me today. He had like 30 fancy points, but... If they could have just closed out that game, he could have played like 40-plus. Um, but you see this upside with Floppy, right? He is clearly the best player on this team. I watched so much C9. Um, now, these C9 guys are going to be pretty low-owned just because, you know, they were they choked a huge lead today. Uh, they're underdogs in this one. So they're just going to be a lot lower-owned than these 100 Thieves guys. But I still have interest in Floppy. He's the guy I've been playing almost every single slate. Um I just think he has a lot of upside, and we saw it, right, This the game today. He had literally 30 fancy points in 10 rounds. Um, so he is the guy, again, that I like the most on the C9 side. Everyone else, I think Floppy will garner a little bit of ownership. Everyone else is going to be super, super low-owned. Sonic and MOTM, again, they can have good games, but I don't know if I'm going to go there on, on this slate. I don't know if we have to do it. JT's a stay away. OC would be the only other guy I would consider at 7.4K, but he's also a little bit up and down. It's really... Kind of hard for me to trust anyone else in this roster right now besides Floppy. So, um, yeah, I guess I have some interest in OC. And Sonic can have good games as well. But uh, really the guy I'm looking at the most there is Floppy. And I think he's going to go lower on than these 100 Thieves guys just because they are, um, again, the 100 Thieves are favorites, so they're just going to be a lot more popular. Now, the issue of these 100 Thieves team, right, is they are getting more and more balanced, it seems like, every single day. So AZR... And Lias have the worst numbers, but they've had, no, I think two straight games where they've been the top performers on this team. So look at their price points. We have, the prices are pretty good in these 100 Thieves guys, where you have Gratis Faction at 7.4, JKS 7.2, Jakeem 6.8, AZR 6.2, and Lias 5.6K. I honestly think all five of these guys are in play. It's just a little bit hard to differentiate because, again, they're a little bit more balanced team. Um... I think my favorite play for his price would be JKS at 7.2K. I know he was kind of a letdown today. He was super popular. Something that will lower the ownership a little bit on him. I still think he'll be somewhat popular this slate. Um, and I still like Jakeem, too. Those are still my two favorite plays, even though, again, AZR and Lias have looked good recently. Um, so all in all, again, this 100 Thieves team is a team I, I do have interest in. Uh, it's just a little bit hard to... To, you know, again, differentiate who I want to go with on this team. Because um, they are a little bit more of a balanced roster. Um, so let's now move on to Triumph versus EG. EG are the biggest favorites of the day here, minus 325. I'm pretty confident EG can take this one. On the Triumph side, again, it's kind of like the same thing with Dignitas. Kind of like the same thing with Chaos. There's only one guy I would consider as a one-off, and that's Grim. Um, he's 8.8k. He's going to be pretty contrarian today. Uh, but again, looking at his numbers, 0.83 kills per round. That's really, really high. So um, that's just that would probably be the only guy I would consider again as a one-off. Everyone else is a stay away from me on the EG side. I like these EG guys a lot. Uh, they're also going to be very popular. But the price points in these guys look really good, especially with Breeze and Cirque. Now Cirque has been playing uh, some really good Counter Strike recently. He had a great game today. Got another 34 fancy points in a best of one. Um, he's really looked good. That op, uh, he is not missing shots right now. So Cirque is going to be one of the most popular plays of the day, but for good reason. Him and Breeze, I like a lot here. Again, these are the two guys that do carry the roster. Um, so I really like those two guys, uh, two of my favorite plays of the day, uh, along with, you know, those Furia guys. Ethan, Tariq, and Stanislaw, um, I think that are all interesting and all in play. Um, all have slightly negative, um, you know, KDs, right? But they are the biggest favorites of the day. And if EG win this one pretty easily, you could see, you know, one of these three guys having a decent enough game. So, really, it's Breeze and Cirque far away, uh, the top two plays on this team. But I think that the bottom three guys are still in play. Um, they're just, again, more contrarian options. And, um, yeah, I, I think that really wraps it up. So now let's talk about captains and who I'm considering. So first... Let's talk about cash games again, right? 50-50s, double-ups, 
you don't care if you're new to kind of the DFS cash games, you don't care about ownership at all. Again, I kind of, I talk about ownership a lot. I kind of talk about it in you know, my video more in like a GPP mindset, but um, in cash games and you don't care about ownership, you just want to play the optimal plays no matter what. So the guys I would consider for, for cash games for, um, for tomorrow would be, um, let's go through the list here, I guess. So I would say Brolon, Caserato, Caserato, Henny, and Yuri are all a three you can all consider. Again, Bolon as well. Um, I think Flop you, you can consider, but that's a little bit more contrarian since he's an underdog. Um, Crims, I think, is definitely viable. Breeze and Cirque for sure. Um, and then I think JKS, again, kind of like Floppy. Maybe a little bit more contrarian because that game is more of a toss-up. But those would be the guys I'll look to if we're, if we're uh, talking about cash games, right? Um, so, yeah, I think... Personally, the, the 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 chalk tomorrow is going to be Furia, and it's going to be EG. I'm probably going to eat the chalk. I'll probably try to differentiate myself somewhere else. Um, but I really like both those sides. Um, again, Breeze, Cirque on the EG side, Caserato, Henny, and Yuri on the Furia side. I know they're going to be popular, but I really like all those guys today. Um, so, yeah, again, my GPP strategy, normally again, I've gone over this a lot in these videos, but I'll go over it again is I like playing a lot of the chalk. Chalk is chalk for a reason, right? They're they're the top, you know, kind of optimal plays of the slate. But I like to get different in maybe one or two spots or maybe go with an underdog in one spot. So, sure, you know, maybe my strategy would play a lot of those chalk and maybe go floppy, right? Or maybe go one-off with one of those underdogs, right? Maybe a one-off with Dignitas or a one-off with Chaos or one-off with Triumph. Um, or, again, you can... Uh, if you want to get different, you could, you know, maybe those big favorites target one of those cheap guys and hope they do decent, right? So maybe a guy like JW, I think, is, is in play for value, right? I think, um, you know, you can consider Art and Vinny. Uh, again, those are riskier plays. On the 100 Thieves side, I think there's a lot of plays that are viable, but it's a little bit difficult because they're a more balanced team. So, yeah, all in all, I think the slate is interesting. I think it's going to be more chalky than this last slate since we have more, again, we have bigger favorites. Um... But yeah, I think that is uh, that basically wraps it up for this video. So uh, yeah, if you guys have been enjoying the content so far, I really appreciate it if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and again, hit that notification bell. Hitting that notification bell does really, really help me out. So take two seconds every day out of your day, guys, and hit that notification bell. Um, but yeah, thanks again, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys are all staying safe, staying healthy, um, and I will be back for another video for to break down Friday slate. So I will uh, see you guys then.